it's been a strong handover that we got from the Wall Street and that is something which is reflecting in the Asian markets as well. In the net profits, it's a big profit of 3,764 crores versus a loss of 945 crores same time last year. The immediate support, it comes in at, a, at the 40 hourly exponential moving average. Yesterday, we traded above that level all of the session, 19,117 is that level. So margins, they are up to 70 basis points on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, much better than what the street was working with. Significant upcoming new launches in NCR with a few of the new Gurgaon projects we added. Facing a lot of headwinds on price competition, which is definitely much lower now. So there you have it, the first tick on the opening bell, very strong there. We saw outflows from foreigners up to $5 billion. The US economy for 2024 is going to be slower than in 2023. Things are looking higher now at the day's high. Key drivers, according to them, will be hospital services EBITDA to expand at an 18% CAGR in FY24 to 26. Three-day IPO closed yesterday. It was fully subscribed on the final day of bidding. Budget exercise has begun at North Block. But we've realized now that retail intervention is working better for the consumer than wholesale. Well, it's definitely a Friday cheer that we're seeing in our own market today. Well, it's a Friday afternoon. You're with us here on uh, Closing Bell. We're coming to you from the CNBC TV 18 Moti Rosewall Studios. Last 60 minutes coming up. I'm Prashant with me. My colleagues Nigel and Reema, guys. Hi, good afternoon. Hi. These are the final 60 <laughs> minutes of the week. Yeah. I don't think anyone's getting the joke because if you had the same <laughs> audience as yesterday, yes, they got the joke. <laughs> but Reema, you weren't there yesterday, right? I mean, how, yeah. do, how do you know? Well, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just in case you missed it yesterday, Prashant, when he was talking about market closing at 3.30. Are you announce it? <laughs> yes, I'm going to announce it. So they are in on the joke. He decided that this is it for the week. He's not going to do any more. Uh, so he said that's a wrap for the then, no, then we had to remind him that, Prashant, there's one more day. One more day. So make, make sure you don't call in sick on Friday. Otherwise, you know what's out on your mind. Yeah. Bad idea to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, it's a decent looking uh, screen. And so we don't have to uh, do very much, I guess. It's it's a, it's a nicely, I can't say trending day, but it's a very, very steady day. Look at that. I mean, you basically, it's almost repetition of what we saw yesterday. We are exactly where we opened. I mean, uh, you know, no additional incremental gains from there on. Uh, but what 19,262 is where we read. <coughs> so, you know, the high today, uh, the day's high today is exactly at the 38% retracement. A level we've been putting out for the last couple of days. Actually, the high is not 280, it's 276. So we fell four points short of that level. Uh, so that becomes the first level. After that is the 50 and the 61.8. Uh, so the 50% uh, comes in at about 19,388. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the 20 day comes in at about 19,440, which is, I think, uh, also where the 20 day uh, roughly uh, comes in at. Uh, Bank Nifty, uh, you know, it's trading as we speak. Once again, at the 50% retracement of the uh, October fall, which is 43,348. There, the next one is 61.8, which is 43,641. So, step by step. And of course, I mean, you know, I have been saying that the small cap index is perhaps the strongest stock index in the world. And uh, look at that. We are 1% away on the small cap index, actually 1.3 or so, depending on uh, how things are changing, but approximately 1% away from its high. So, 7% fall, all of it recouped. And uh, you're basically almost back at uh, the previous all-time high. Rima. Hi, and just for context, the mid and the nifty is about 5% away from its all-time high levels versus the small cap index, which is, you know, off the off from its all-time highs by nearly 1%. But today has turned out to be a very, very steady session. The low last week was 18,837. And from that level, the Nifty has gained close to about 400 points. A week to date, you've got the Nifty Sensex gaining close to about 1%, mid-caps outperforming with a rally of close to about 1.9%. Some last-hour movers include an Aisha Motors. Pull that stock up for you on your screen. It's gained 3, 3.5% on that, 3% now. You've got a few IT names like uh, LTI, Mindtree, um, you know, so you know, watch out for LTI Mine Tree. That's up to and a half percent. The TCS has moved to the day's low and is completely flattening out. I say it's a bank too, surging in trade. And the big cues to track will be today, post market hours, the October jobs data from the United States, and tomorrow, State Bank of India and Bank of Baroda numbers. Well, uh, you know, Reema Prashant, I'm going to uh, Delhi on Monday for the conference, the BOFA mm -hmm. com conference. I was looking at the AFS, they're through the roof. You know, I, I think. Uh, can go to Dubai and come back uh, in in the same amount. You know that's that's how high it is, and I'm putting it into context because 
uh, some couple of these stocks, Interglobe Aviation has just taken off. You know, the stock is at the high point of the day. Yeah. I know personally yeah. that it's for good reason because looking I think at the numbers also today, right? In, oh, the numbers uh, as well. Uh, uh, you know, today, just take a look at that. I don't know whether that's hitting the screen, but uh, that's one stock that's really taken off. By in the, the way, last uh, few Nigel, when are you? You there? Uh, you staying back on Monday? No, I'm coming back Monday night, and I'll be here on Tuesday. You should. You should stay. Uh, there's uh, Shankar Mahadevan playing. I know. That's what. Evening. That's what the Bofa team told me, but. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I need to see the kids before I sleep, so <laughs> I'd rather do that. I'm coming on late night, right? But I, I mean, I you know, there is it. another company called Rate Gain, which <laughs> yeah. feeds, you know, from the entire travel boom. So yeah. their clients would be the likes of Make My Trip, you know, online travel agents or hotels or airline companies. And this is a company which is seeing an organic growth of 35% yeah. in the first half of the year. And they said H2 will be just as strong, including the acquisition. They'll see a growth of 65%. But organic revenue growth mm. of 35%, that's absolutely, you know, phenomenal. Um, you know, so that's another one. And Adding I, think, to that I, think, I, I think they joined us earlier yeah. today they as well us. and they sounded and quite, they quite optimistic. The... Guys, but it's a Friday afternoon. Take a look at stocks like Tilaknagar Industries. The stock is flying away, uh, you know, the brandy maker out there. So that stock came out with a set of numbers. We'll try to get the management next week as well. That's taken off in the last few minutes. They've added gin as well to their portfolio. And that's been con continuously building on gains. Vascon is another stock that's uh, spiked up as well. So <coughs> highlighting some of these stocks because volumes are unusually high on these names. But how do you position yourself for the final hour of trade? Mitesh Shakar, I think, is back with us. So I think we have Kush today. Uh, Kush Bora is with us. Hi, Kush. Good afternoon. We hope you're feeling good. Just a 60 minutes more, and then you're off for the weekend. But how do you approach trade? It's been a good session, but that knockout punch is missing, right? Because both the days we opened in the green, and we're holding on to those gains. Not so bad, but you want that knockout punch to come about. Hi, Nigel. Hi, guys. First up, thank you for having me on the show. Well, I think my weekend began four minutes earlier uh, with all the conversation that you were having. It was so engrossing. Uh, but yeah, I would say that, you know, this is actually not a bad sign. Uh, I know you track uh, derivatives data very closely. And the last week, it was a nightmare for the put writers. I think this week is perhaps turning out to be a bit of a nightmare for the call writers because 19,000, 19,100 and 19,200, you know, uh, day by day had very strong call bases and all these levels are sort of getting taken out. That's from the derivative front. But if I look at it, technically, see, we're back in that 19200 to 19550 zone, you know, where we spent a lot of time. And it's not a bad sign. I wouldn't mind Nifty hovering here, spending some time, uh, because that will just at least keep the sentiment, uh, you know, uh, happy and positive on the street for the Diwali rally, for the Diwali cheer. Uh, and the, the rest of the stocks could actually perhaps, uh, you know, keep doing their thing. So I wouldn't mind Nifty spending some time in 19200, 19500 zone. Uh, the bank Nifty, for the first time now, it's above the 200 day moving average. Looks like it will close above the 200 day moving average today. So this could be a bit of a kicker. But uh, for 43,700 is perhaps you know, one of the resistance zones uh, for the bank Nifty. So even if the indices stay here uh, or have a slight positive bias, I think the markets will perhaps take it with both hands. And that could uh, be the uh, you know, knockout punch that you're asking for. And since uh, it's a Friday on a lighter note, you guys discussed travel and liquor. How could you miss out cricket, right? If the markets mm. are celebrating our thumping win over Sri Lanka like this, I don't know how they'll cheer when we win the World Cup. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, all right, uh, Kush. Uh, uh, you know, thanks for the call uh, on the on the index. But uh, you want to give us a couple of more, uh, you know, uh, stock calls that are talking about. You know, by the way, actually, the markets have slipped a little bit in the last few minutes when we're having that conversation. Let's see who's putting pressure. Bajaj Finsurf, I think, has moved a little lower. Maruti as well has uh, slipped a little bit from the top. And Indusind Bank, the one that's actually been holding strong. You know, so few of these names have moved lower. Kush, you want to give us a view on some of the stocks? Uh, a couple of stocks that I have on my radar, uh, Nigel, starting with those, uh, you know, uh, Prestige and Granules. Now, if you see Prestige had taken a bit of a knock, you know, a couple of days back, but the revival on this has been equally sharp. So uh, my sense is that this rally could, you know, continue. In fact, it could now uh, take out the resistance level of, uh, you know, the 780, 85 zone that it's been in for the last couple of uh, weeks. So I think on the upside, 810, 840 are the targets that one should look at. 750 is where, you know, I'd place my stop loss. Uh, from the derivatives front, uh, there is granules. The stock had actually seen a bit of buildup over the last couple of days. Today, we are seeing a very clear breakout. So on the upside, you know, 355 to 365 are the targets, uh, you know, on granules. And now I would have my stop loss close to 340. So a couple of these names on my radar, Nigel. Okay, uh, let's uh, move on and talk about Arvind Fashion, which has surged 5% in trade as Reliance Retail Subsidiary 
will acquire Arvind Fashion's beauty division. Sirbi joins in with the details on this transaction. Sirbi. Thanks so much for that. So Arvind Beauty Brands, which is essentially Sephora, is being bought by Reliance Beauty and Personal Care, a subsidiary of Reliance Retail. Now this transaction is being done at an enterprise value of 216 odd crores. This is for both the equity and the repayment of loans. For the equity part of it, Reliance Retail is going to be paying 99 crores. Now Sephora contributed close to 8% of Arvind Fashion's FY23 revenues, which is close to 340 crores. But profitability in Sephora was a problem for Arvind Fashions for quite a long uh, time now. In all the past earnings call, this was a lingering question. And in Q1 uh, conference call that had happened, uh, Arvind Fashions management had said that they are in uh, talks with Arvind, uh, Sephora's headquarters to see where the next what the next steps are on the profitability front and previously on the con call they've said that the profitability is low single digits and they have not been able to penetrate Sephora as they had wished and the company still does not have the online rights for Sephora. So uh, Sephora's profitability was a lingering thing and now that is off their portfolio you can see that the stock is surging in chain. Okay, thank you very much uh, for that. Prakash Tivan is with us on the show. Uh, it's a bit of an overhang lifted, uh, Prakash, from Arvind Fashions. The stock is surged 7%. What next for Arvind Fashions now? Now that this deal, which the street was waiting for, in a way has concluded. Uh, good afternoon, Vima. So, absolutely. Now, you know, they, they could possibly move on with some expansion in their core businesses that are uh, in verticals that are making sense, making a lot of money. Uh, remember, you know, the revival for uh, Arvind Fashions had uh, multi uh, vectors working for it. You you had the school uniform business coming back. You had some some sort of restocking happening uh, in in some of the other uh, you know uh, retail vertical. But now for them to expand, it's it's going to be you know adding some more power brands. So they've they've kind of been uh, uh, stifled of sorts by the Sephora uh, investment, and that's precisely the reason why the market celebrating that they couldn't expand, they couldn't get get out of it. So you know this is this is good riddance. And in that sense, uh, it gives them the headroom to grow into some of the other retail formats and those power brands that I spoke about. So if they start focusing on that or refocusing on that, you'll probably see some more, uh, you know, organic uh, uh, growth coming in and the market could probably like that. Uh, fashion and textile as a combination uh, is very, it's, it's not very commonly uh, available. Like so you have a Gokul that exposed, which would be to manufacture and expose of garment, but they really don't have a label or they don't have a, a you know, library of labels. Whereas Arvind Fashion actually has that. So from that angle, it's, it's kind of well poised, but uh, it, it takes some time for them to kind of, you know, uh, show the results after this uh, exit. So let them scale up or show signs of scaling up and the stock would definitely get re-rated from these 350 zones too at least at 20, 25 percent uh, higher in the next six to eight months. Okay, uh, <clears throat> Prakash, uh, you know, stay with us. And uh, we want your comments on the next one. This is Chola Finance we're talking about. Uh, the stock actually sold off. We had the management with us in the morning and uh, the concern seems to be, I mean, the sell-off actually started after the conference call. Uh, but the, And the concern seems to be the uh, NPAs in the new business segment, which is basically lending to SMEs, lending to uh, lending into the unsecured segment, and I think there's one more small uh, bit to it. So these are the major heads. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, we asked Chola uh, management what would be the tolerable uh, sort of, you know, NPA in that particular segment, and the management did say, on an overall basis, it, they're, they're okay with, uh, you know, that level rising to about 25 percent but there is more detail here and more nuance here, uh, which Abhishek is going to explain to us. Abhishek, over to you. Uh, well, Prashant, as you mentioned, uh, Chola Malam did have a con call. Uh, key highlight is that the new business loan NPS are below industry uh, norms and within the expectations of the management. And it is lower than the secured business of Chola as well. Now, early vintage delinquencies have shot up over there and not a concern as of now. And they are uh, saying that it is coming under control. Now, just to explain our viewers, uh, there's two part to this uh, new business that they have formed. About 25, 30% is source from uh, various partners and about 70 75 percent is done by them on a standalone basis or on their own so in that own category uh, the traditional lines of business that they are doing the gross NPA is at 0.8 percent in this new category of which is via partnership uh, that they do uh, the uh, gross NPA is about 4.7 4.8 percent over there so that is the niggling worry that uh, has caught the street off guard uh, they are cautious on uh, you know taking steps 
stance with respect to partnership going ahead. Uh, they'll be more cautious on the partnership line. They'll be slowing down over there. That is, they'll remove the partners, uh, many whom they do not find uh, feasible. And partnership is protected by the FLDG. That is, first low, uh, loss uh, default given over their guarantee. Uh, however, they are also taking it on hold uh, with respect to them also providing on the same, if at all, defaults are higher. So, uh, they are not adding new partners. Uh, they are helping partners to correct their systems and also saying that they are slowing down on partnership segment and which partners to, ha to have it in their portfolio and which to remove. So, uh, they are increasing filters, especially on the collection mechanism, uh, which is there with the partnership agreement that they have. So, with respect to demand outlook, they say that the festive season, uh, passenger vehicle and construction equipment were good from the Dashara perspective. Uh, tractors and two-wheelers will improve from November onwards and commercial vehicle will improve in H2 FI24. With respect to credit cost and unsecured share, uh, they did say that, uh, you know, the overall credit cost for the entire entity will be about 1.1% to 1.2%. However, the new business segments will carry higher credit cost than the tra uh, traditional business that they are in. So, unsecured share, they'll try and maintain it uh, within 10% over the next few years. Back to you. Okay, thank you very much uh, for that. That's Titan's uh, numbers which are flashing for you on your screen. The company has delivered a top line of about 11,660. This is ahead of the CNBC TV18 poll uh, and it's significantly ahead of our poll. You know, it's beaten our expectations by close to about, I think, 1,400 crore. Uh, so that's a big beat that we're seeing on the company's, uh, you know, top line. And it's surprising considering that the company does give you a cheat sheet and they had guided in a way for adjusted revenue growth of about 20%. EBITDA margins for the company have come in at, I think, 11.5%. They're about slightly lower than the CNBC TV18 poll, but uh, profits are higher by close to about 9.5%. There you have it. The top line for the company has gone up by 33% on a year-on-year -year basis. Um, you know, versus the CNBC TV18 poll of about 17%, and even the company's broad guidance of a top-line growth of close to about 20%. Prakash is uh, with us on the show. Uh, Prakash, uh, a big beat on the top line, but a bit, bit of a miss on the bottom line, uh, on the margins. So, you know, of course, we'll have to wait for the internal and the product mix might explain that uh, uh, slight uh, softness and margins, because... You know, the the expectation of the market was that they would probably not be able to grow as aggressively as some other other brands uh, have grown. The competitive intensity and the premium segment is increasing. Everybody's kind of moved on to that value chain. But uh, if, if these are the numbers that Titan has uh, reported and the internals give you that indication that it's firing on all cylinders for last year, la last quarter, we saw Caraclay contribute so significantly, which was not the case earlier. So, you know, you always have these optionalities that come into play with Titan. Uh, it's a sum of parts which is quite complex now as a business. But I would I would look forward to hearing that before uh, taking any buying decision. But uh, there's absolutely no reason to worry uh, from from these kind of numbers uh, about uh, you know any weakness that you could expect. It's about how quickly or how strongly it could grow from here. That's that's what the uh, answers you'll get for. Okay, all right. I think Mangalam as well will be joining us in just a bit uh, to help us out with a quick analysis. For the time being, though, the street likes what we have seen. And the stock has spiked up to the high point of the day. Let's do one thing. Let's slip into a short break. You come back. Mangalam will join us to give us analysis on Titan. Rajesh Kotari as well will be joining in to fill us in with his view on the markets.
Welcome back. Titan is the stock of the moment as they reported their Q2 numbers. A big surprise beat on the top line. Uh, the stock initially reacted positively, now it's still up 2%. Manglam has gone through the details. Manglam? Well, you know, as far as Titan's revenue is concerned, let's uh, tell you that the top line beat is actually not a beat basis what the company's cheat sheet is. Instead, it is on account of the gold ingots that the company sells. So extra gold that the company is left with by the end of the quarter, they sell it in the open market. And that sale of gold ingots this quarter has been close to 1,755 crores. The comparable number for that was close to around 482 crores. So if you adjust for that, the revenue is largely in line with what the company had told us and what the street had anticipated as well. But what is actually a positive is that there's a mild positive surprise on the margins. The watches business, uh, as the company had said, you know, a 30% plus growth out there has crossed the 1,000 crore per quarter milestone. So that is important. And the reason why perhaps the stock is gaining is because one, it had been an underperformer. And secondly, the management commentary with regards to the third quarter is pretty strong as well. What they're saying is that, you know, there was strong demand on account of uh, the gold and uh, the diamond activations that the company had done, the festival of diamond studded activation. And the third quarter, because of the festive season, has started well as well. So yes, there is an optical beat on the top line, but that's largely on account of sales of the commoditized gold ingots, which are nearly four times the uh, number that we had saw same time last quarter. And margins are slightly better than expectations. The watches business has clocked 1,000 crore plus in terms of quarterly revenue, with the management commentary for the third quarter sounding slightly positive, along with the underperformance of the stock, makes all of this a recipe for an up move. Okay, <clears throat> Mangalam, thanks very much for that. You know, uh, that's Titan for you, uh, but markets come off. I mean, from yes. 230 mm -hmm. levels, I think the Nifty is down 40 points. Uh, so we're at about 19,225, about 94 points in the green. Uh, so that's a bit of a drop off that we've seen. And the bank Nifty as well, I think from the 230 level, we were at about 43,374. <clears throat> you know, the Nifty bank has also given up uh, gains. We're at 43,310 or so. Uh, so let's see how things uh, proceed and whether. Post 3 p.m. is something different or maybe it accentuates. Uh, well, diagnostic companies like Dr. Lal Path Labs uh, are in focus and actually so is Petropolis. The, the, you know, we had uh, Dr. Lal Path Labs with us in the uh, morning and the thrust of that conversation essentially was that maybe uh, discounting to get customers, to get share uh, and cutting prices basically, that seems to be uh, behind. Uh, so com competitive intensity is still very much there, but... Uh, you know, going, uh, competing with just price cuts, that's now kind of uh, uh, over. Shares of Dr. Lal, of course, five and a half higher. That's on the back of a strong set of numbers as well. Amira Shav, Metropolis also told my colleague Shireen the same thing, uh, that, uh, you know, this <coughs> venture capital funded uh, mania in terms of, uh, you know, being able to heavily discount offerings, that perhaps is a thing of the past. Listen in. Competition intensity in this business has always been there. It's only that organized competitors have come much more in the last three to four years. Uh, those That number still is there, right? You have competition from hospital space, you have competition from pharma companies. I think that will continue. I think the positive news in the industry today is that it's not a price-led competition. Now, I think the focus is shifted to value-driven competition, uh, which is that people are now focusing on uh, operational excellence, people are focusing on quality, people are focusing on, I think that's a positive news for the industry. To my mind, I think this deep discounting, which was a way of life maybe a, a year, uh, year from now, I think that's gone away. See the competitive intensity, there's a lot of perception around people coming into the industry and therefore a lot of price wars, etc. It all depends on what kind of business you've built. If you've built a business which is in the tail end of the industry with customers who are only considering price and are not interested in quality of your services or your outcomes, then this is a bad time for you because you're going to get hit by all the competitive intensity and all the pricing um, uh, challenges that are happening. But for a company like ours who's always built our services on the back, of top doctors, top hospitals, really good science, and finally people who value our quality of our reports and our services, and they're not coming to us for being the cheapest provider in the country. Frankly, this competitive intensity is only spurring us uh, to be more innovative, to be more uh, effective, to be more uh, rigorous in our work. All right, well, keep an eye out on the bottom of your screen. You had Zomato's numbers out there. They have delivered a net profit that compares to a net loss on a year-in-year -year basis. And the stock was as still trending higher 
and now it's moved to the high point of the day. The revenues as well up by close to around 72% approximately. So, uh, you know, that stock is spiking up. I think last quarter as well, it reported a mile profit. Two crore was two the crore. profit, which was the first time ever. And now it's 36 crore. Yeah, so, you know, they're building on to... Uh, uh, to that and also uh, you know in terms of revenues the previous quarter as well was 2400 crores now that's gone up to around 2800 crores the street seems to be liking these numbers and that explains why the stock is up close to around six percent as we speak uh, Prakash you know we've just got the initial numbers coming from Zomato it's at around 115 rupees uh, now 114 approximately we wanted to ask you about uh, the diagnostic stocks but let's focus on the stock of the moment which is Zomato what do you do with it at these prices so I think this this probably seems to be a turnaround uh, which is distinct now. Uh, you don't uh, consider it any more a flash in the pan that last quarter numbers probably would have been uh, uh, you know suspected to indicate. And and you've seen on the ground how Zomato has kind of not only uh, improved its uh, revenue mix, uh, I mean revenue model, the unit economics, but it's also gained significant market share from Swiggy, which was the closest competitor. So I think uh, if you look at the footprint that they now control. Revenues will only grow, and and once competition comes down, uh, it'll probably also get pricing power, retain pricing power that it's probably started seeming to get. So I think it's it's a good time for those uh, people who now want to believe in that story of of food delivery uh, solutions being a viable business. Uh, Zomato is probably done, but you know there's a lot of money that will also go out of Zomato uh, at different levels. People who have been waiting patiently, who bought in that you know that 80, 85 zones they would start kind of wanting to de-risk their, uh, uh, their allocations also. So you'll see at every rise, you'll probably also see that till that gets absorbed, well, the stock will be slightly range bound with a positive bias. Mm. Okay. I'm <clears throat> sorry. Uh, you know, so yeah, we'll get more details on this one, uh, I think, uh, with uh, Mangalam in a bit from now. Prakash, thank you very much for joining us. Good speaking with you. Out of all of the names, I mean, Paytm, PB Fintech, uh, Nika, Delivery, you know, these uh, recent listings, actually Zomato is the only one which is basically above its IPO price. Uh, you know, now, of course, significantly above its IPO price. I think they sold stock at about some 76. Uh, it had a move to 120, 130, whatever. And then there was a steep sell-off down to 30, 35 uh, rupees. And it's now, uh, you know, of course, done very well to about 114 and a half. This is some, something which kind of evokes very strong emotions from those who like it and saying that the scale of the business could be anything because it's basically a duopoly. There is Zomato, there is Swiggy. And to build out that kind of a business uh, is uh, very, very hard. Uh, but, and of course, I mean, they've shown that they are, it, they're able to charge, you know, a nominal sum uh, to get those delivery to consumers as well. It's a real felt need. So it's not as if it's a, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a service we all use, but, uh, you know, extremely, uh, the, People who are bullish, very, very bullish, out of the pack. I mean, that uh, this could be a real big scale business uh, going forward. So, Wasn't this the quarter when they st <clears throat> started introducing that platform fee? You know, earlier, remember, orders used That's to be free, is, and now all these uh, e-commerce yeah, companies, uh, now they have the this fixed, uh, you know, platform fee. That. So, it would have been in Q2. But I think Q3 is going to be even stronger, right? With the entire Cricket World Cup and Diwali coming. Yeah. So, I think Q3 is going to be the real blockbuster for Zomato. Uh, absolutely. Could be. Uh, let's actually uh, put this to uh, Rajesh Kothari, who is with us. He's Managing Director at Alpha Accurate Advisors. Rajesh, good to have you with us here. I just wanted your thoughts on uh, Zomato, as we were uh, sort of discussing. Uh, do you like it? Do you have a view here? Uh, Rajesh, I think you are on mute. Hi, sorry, sorry for that. Uh, so, hi, so basically, you know, uh, difficult to give uh, stock specific views, but uh, what I can say is that in general, all the digital platform companies, thanks to the very, what I would say, very harsh winter on the new age businesses globally and in India, uh, the, the, what I would say, the choice of promoters, the entrepreneurs, to focus on profitability over revenue, that has become a natural, obvious choice for them. The business mode was always there, but the just to gain market share while burning money, that was a problem when you are an unlisted company. And when you become a listed entity, everybody starts focusing on how much money you are making and ultimately ROE. Now, because of the harsh winter on the private equity side, I think the most of the listed companies on the digital platform side of the verticals we have started focusing on profitability. They became more rational. And at the same time, because of the unavailability of the new funding, the new entrants are not able to enter with that, uh, what I would say, sharp pricing or the discounting or to burn money kind of an uh, you know, uh, aspiration. And that results into all of a sudden significant improvement in profitability 
be it a food delivery business or be it a insurance related technology business or be it a payment related technology business so i think uh, all these companies are going to do well uh, you know they have a definitely good moat what they enjoy in their business and uh, the, the only risk uh, i always say the disruption can be also disrupted so technology remains the biggest risk uh, if somebody comes out with something little better something little different uh, and something more efficient um, then then it then becomes a real threat so uh, you know we need to keep monitoring how this business profitabilities are improving and how they can also improve the scale along with the margins so that's basically the uh, tracking points from our perspective mm. Uh, but Rajesh, does this all translate into buying any of the new age tech companies? Are they a part of your portfolio? Uh, yeah, we do own. Uh, if you look at our portfolio, we do own. Uh, uh, you know, a uh, few names uh, in this. Uh, uh, you know, good digital businesses, uh, and uh, they've been quite rewarding for us. All right, hi Rajesh. You know, you've always told us uh, you'll move things around and you'll look to optimize profits and your returns as well have actually been quite good over the last few years. So good on you and good on your investors as well. Give us a couple of those stocks where you'll have either increased weightage or reduced, or maybe you'll have added something fresh in your portfolio. Give us a couple of names. Uh, unfortunately, due to regulations uh, now, you know, uh, difficult to put the names, but I can tell you the, what we are, uh, you know, uh, becoming more positive on. So auto insulin is one space uh, where we are adding the weightages. Uh, I think uh, because of the change in technology from ICE to EV, uh, your opportunity of the content per vehicle is going to become a 2x, 3x compared to, uh, you know, where are we today? And that gives a uh, immense scope and potential for uh, many good established uh, auto ancillary companies uh, to increase their revenue size uh, because, you know, potential is 2x, 3x per vehicle. Uh, at the same time, uh, because of their domain in their businesses, they are also adding the uh, global customers uh, in their client profile list. Now, combine of this can result into 25, 30, 40 percent kind of a compounded profit growth for many auto ancillary companies. So, this is one space incrementally, if you ask me, uh, where we are becoming uh, you know, more positive. The second space uh, is the NBFC space. We have discussed last time as well. And uh, we continue to like that theme of uh, non banking finance companies. Many of these names are now at, I would say, 15, 18, 19, 20 percent kind of a ROE with a very strong 20 to 30 percent kind of a loan book growth. Now, this combination is a rare combination because on the bank side, most of them are growing at 12, 13 percent uh, or maybe profit 14, 15 percent with a good ROE ranging between 14 to 16 percent. But on NBFC side, now we are getting a select NBFCs where ROEs are upwards of 18 percent plus and Profit growth, PPOP growth, loan book growth are also 15 to 22, 25% plus. That's a very good combination, apart from, of course, the uh, right credit cost. So that's NBFC space, uh, which is the second one, which I would say, which we are incrementally getting positive. What about uh, Path Labs? Because we're hearing, you know, you know, voices from the management themselves that the competitive intensity, the extent of intense discounting is coming down. Uh, stocks have been beaten down. So is Path Labs looking attractive to you? Uh, yeah, as I said, you know, uh, on the new age side of businesses, there are many guys that wanted to do discounting uh, business and definitely, uh, you know, that, uh, that is reducing. Really uh, but currently, we don't own uh, you know any of these names. Uh, uh, you know, as I speak with you, when we look at this space, we look at overall retail space, be it a pathology, uh, be it a consumer uh, you know focused retail businesses, or be it a uh, you know electronics related retail businesses. And when you put that entire gamut of uh, companies in the universe, from that universe, we select the uh, companies uh, on which we are more bullish on. So currently, these are the names which we currently do not own. We own more on the apparel side. We also own more on the electronic side when it comes to detail as a format. Electronic smart, uh, that one, uh, Rajesh? I missed your voice. Uh, sorry, electronic smart, that, uh, that, that, com that is the company you're talking about? Or I uh, would not like to comment okay. on the names, okay. but, Got it. Uh, you know, uh, but, but there are only few listed companies uh, within <coughs> the you know, electronic space, on the retail space. Yeah. And, uh, you know, those are the names which we are uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, evaluating or might be holding in our portfolio. Rajesh, what to avoid? What to avoid, Rajesh? I think the first very important thing, uh, you know, avoid just pure momentum, number one. 
Uh, number two, avoid companies uh, where profit size and ROE and debt equity are not healthy. Because right now I can see many stocks which have gone up two times, 10 times, 20 times without underlying strong fundamentals. Because of course market has been very strong, but that may not continue for long. And once that comes down, uh, it leads to significant uh, permanent loss of capital. So uh, my, uh, what I would say, only appeal to the viewers is, uh, please make sure that don't lose your capital on permanent basis. You know, there are many things to avoid from the stock specific perspective. Uh, Rajesh, this or dire, uh, so Titan just reported numbers, right? But uh, look at, I mean, Senco, it's, I think, locked up, uh, it's been locked up for a while. It's at a new high, uh, done very well. Uh, Tangamile reported numbers recently. Uh, there was a bit of a disappointment. The market didn't like the numbers, but it's done very, very well. Do you like this space? I mean, again, organized uh, retail in the jewelry side? Of course. Uh, you know, uh, we own one of the name, what you mentioned, Titan, from last, uh, you know, uh, you know, a few years. We continue to currently own. Please put a disclaimer. We own this company for our portfolio clients. And we remain extremely bullish, uh, you know, on this space. Uh, I think entire space is going to do well. Um, but one important thing, uh, when you look at this space, is the corporate governance. Because, uh, you know, uh, as a, as, a, as a business uh, store, you are also dealing in cash. Uh, and that's where the governance is something very important in uh, retail business in particular, and more importantly for uh, you know, gold and jewelry business, because it is a large ticket items. Um, so we are more comfortable, extremely comfortable, of course, uh, with the select names. Uh, and uh, uh, despite their size and despite their market leadership, uh, they continue to outgrow the industry, and they continue to do extremely well. So, uh, of course, it has been very rewarding for us. Mm. Uh, you spoke about avoiding momentum stocks. Now, over the past few months, we've seen momentum in PSU banks, we've seen momentum in defense, railways, uh, EMS companies. Any of these uh, pockets which have done very well, where you think the fundamentals don't align with the kind of up move that we've seen? I think uh, when it comes to avoiding the things, uh, it becomes more stock specific rather than generalizing the things. Like, for example, PSU banks, they're really good banks. But few names, be it PSU or be it private, uh, irrespective of the sector, irrespective of owner, uh, you know, irrespective of global or local, uh, you know, there are names which have gone up without underlying fundamentals. So I'm saying more from that perspective. PSU bank in general, no problem. We also own PSU banks. EMS companies, we also own. But I've seen few companies, their names have changed and they have all of a sudden became EMS. Uh, they claim themselves as the EMS. And those stocks are up 10x in the uh, last five, six months. Uh, so I would say avoid such kind of things, you know. All right, Rajesh, uh, good speaking to you. Thanks so much for joining. And we're hopeful to chat with you on more stock-related names maybe the next time around. So uh, if that's possible, it will be great. Wishing you a good weekend and uh, festivities in case we don't speak uh, before that. Well, look, uh, Escorts, uh, Kubota, those numbers flash for you on the screen. Solid margin improvement is what we're seeing, coming in at around 13%. That compares with around 8.1%. I'm not sure whether or not we had a poll out there. But initial tick on those numbers are positive, And that explains why that stock has moved to the high point of the day. So just keep an eye on that. Slip into a short break. Come back. We'll continue to focus on markets. We'll also get in our technical picks from our experts. Stay with us.
Welcome back. Well, the stock of the last 20 minutes or so has to be Zomato. That stock has moved to the high point of the day. Remember, it was holding in the green, but it seems there's a fair bit of appetite out there, currently at around 115 rupees. Manglam joins us to give us a quick analysis on those numbers. Manglam, the numbers look good? The numbers look very good. In fact, quarter on quarter, if you look at it, you know, the revenues have grown by about 18 odd percent. 28.50 thereabout uh, is uh, what the company has reported on the top line. The EBITDA loss has uh, stayed the same despite the revenue growth. So that's only telling you that the operational performance of the company has improved from 48 crores. The loss has uh, remained at around 47 odd crores. The company has reported a net profit of 36 crores versus 2 crores. That's an 18 times jump. So one would, uh, you know, intuitively ask, how is it that uh, post an EBITDA loss, the company remains net profitable? Well, because the other income component for Zomato is very high from 181 crores. The other income has come to around 212 crores. And secondly, they have a tax credit benefit as well, which was there at the same time last quarter. So in the previous quarter, there was a tax credit of 17 crores. Now there is a tax credit of around 16 odd crores. The important and the big positive part here is that the cash flow from operations has moved from a negative 488 crores to a positive 288 crores. That's year on year. So that's something that, you know, really stands out in terms of their numbers. So cash burn has uh, negated and now the company keeps adding cash every quarter. And secondly, the core of the business, which is the food delivery business, it has shown a revenue growth of 13% and out there the margins have been maintained. So the EBITDA of the food business from 186 crores has jumped all the way to 210 crores, similar growth rate as the revenue itself. The quick commerce business, which is now the growth driver of the company, has seen a quarter-on-quarter -quarter jump of 32% in the revenues. 384 crores has turned into 505 crores. And the EBIT loss has narrowed out there. So 105 crores uh, EBIT loss has turned into 94 crore EBIT loss. So as revenue grows there, this business is likely to turn around as well. And that's what the management has been talking about too. Uh, Hyper Pure, which is the you know restaurant supplies business, that has seen a revenue growth of 21%. And out there too, the EBIT losses have been contained. So short point, revenue has grown, while the losses have been contained. And in their core, the margin has expanded. In the Hyper Pure business, the losses have been contained, whereas Blinkit, the losses have actually narrowed. All these things bode well. The company's cash burn has stopped. And as a result of which, the street rejoices these numbers. Okay, thank you very much for explaining each of the segments in you know great detail. That Zomato for you, pretty much firing on all cylinders. But back to talking about the markets. Uh, the Nifty is at nineteen thousand two thirty. When we started the show, we were closer to nineteen thousand two fifty, but steady and firm still. Uh, Kush Bora is with us now for a few uh, BTSD calls for the weekend. Kush, what do you have for us? Hi, Anima. So, not too worried about the 20-30 uh, uh, point fall on the Nifty. As I said, you know, this is a good congestion zone. We, we could remain here for some time. As far as the stock-specific picks go, uh, I have two of them. First is LNT Finance. The stock is doing uh, rather well today. Uh, more interestingly, it's broken above the 140 uh, resistance zone that, you know, it was uh, hovering around for a while now and on back of very good volume. So this uh, upside momentum could continue. Uh, 144 to 147 are the next levels on uh, LNT Finance and 138 is a good support zone. Uh, my next pick is Hindustan Aeronautics. A very similar story here. 1900 was turning out to be a bit of a resistance zone. The stock is actually closing, you know, looks like it's closing above that. So, uh, you know, a closing above this level could push the stock higher to 1940 and 1970 levels. 1870 is where I would place my stop loss. Okay, uh, <clears throat> Kush, uh, thanks for that. By the way, any it's a, it's got not that much trading history, uh, Kush, but uh, Senko Gold. In its short life, it's at a it's at a new high. Uh, but uh, short life on listed life that is. But uh, any thoughts, Senko? So, well, Prashant, if I look at the near term, uh, you know, momentum on this very clearly, you know, the stock's actually sort of broken out today, uh, you know, on the back of good volumes. I wouldn't be surprised to see, uh, you know, this momentum uh, continue. On certain select momentum indicators, it is actually on the cusp of a breakout from here on as well. So a move uh, towards, you know, 785 and 820 levels cannot be ruled out. On the downside, uh, you know, I would place my stop loss just below uh, 700. So about 695 is a good uh, zone to keep your stop losses at. Okay. All right. Uh... Uh, Kush, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your uh, time. Great speaking with you here on CNBC TV 18. SBI will be reporting its second quarter earnings tomorrow. Uh, Abhishek is here to quickly tell us what to expect. Abhishek. 
Uh, well, watch out for the net interest margin for SBI as the street is anticipating a slowest NII growth on a YY basis in last seven quarters. Net interest margin can come under pressure. ICICI Securities estimates a five basis point decline in net interest margin. Loan growth to be around 12% YY and 3% quarter quarter. Previous quarter, the loan growth was about 15, 15.5%. Now, ICICI Securities estimates slippages of 5,500 crore. In the previous quarter, it was at 7,872 crores. Kotak Securities estimates estimates operating profit growth to be at 0.9% YOY and a decline of 15.8% sequentially. Remember that in the previous quarter, they had pressure gains of nearly 3,850 crore, which uh, can decline this time around as there may not be any treasury gains. Asset quality expected to remain stable or improve. Motila Loswal expects 20 basis point improvement in uh, gross NP ratio. Management commentary with respect to growth outlook will be seen closely. Two key stress book watch list about 7,221 crore and restructured book of 22,650 crore. Uh, that movement will be seen closely. Our poll suggests an ag growth of 10.9% YOY and about 0.3% sequentially. We are working with a profit growth of 5.8% YOY and a decline of 17% sequentially. Back to you. Okay, all right. Uh, back to you, Abhishek. Tell us about Bank of Baroda. Uh, you've got a busy weekend, it seems. Uh, well, Nigel, busy weekend for sure. Four results tomorrow. Uh, Bank of Baroda also, uh, the net interest margin will be on focus. Analysts estimate net interest margin to decline both YOY and quarter on quarter. Now, operating profit growth could be under pressure. Uh, Kotak Securities estimates a decline of operating profit by 18.6% quarter on quarter, but it will be up about 5.5% YOY. So, slippages seen at 5,500 crore as per Kotak Securities estimate. Uh, this was at 2,761 crore in the the previous quarter there is a one-off in this slippage if it comes around this level uh, given the fact that it might be due to one specific airline account is what Kotak securities have mentioned Motila Loswal expects asset quality to remain stable while outlook on challenges in deposit growth that uh, Bank of Baroda is facing and uh, loan growth and net interest margin going ahead will be the key important factors to watch out for our poll suggests an ag growth of 8.7 percent YOY and about 0.6 percent sequentially we are working with a profit growth of 18.5% YOY and a decline of 3.7% on a sequential basis. Back to you. Okay, well, uh, Abhishek, thanks very much for that. So those are the two big ones from the PSU space, uh, SBI and Bank of Baroda, which will be reporting numbers. The market's up about 94 points, 19,226 is where we are at. We'll come back after a quick break. Sudhi Bandhupandhya, if uh, Indy Trade Capital will be joining in, and of course, we'll wrap up things uh, for you on the closing side, just about, what, 11 minutes to go for market closing.
Welcome back. Well, a few stocks in the broader markets actually are looking very, very nervous. Strides has moved to the low point of the day. You know, that's uh, sitting with a cutoff close on 6%. Godfrey Phillips is, an, is another stock. They came out with their set of numbers. The street didn't like it. U UFO movies as well. You know, some of these stocks were trading in the green earlier today. And now they've moved into the rest. So just highlighting them. And uh, Godfrey Phillips came out with its numbers. SML Isuzu came out with its set of numbers. Strides as well. I think uh, there was some news out there so because all these stocks are under some pressure. Uh, uh, I think uh, Sudeep Andhupadai joins us now on the show. Hi, Sudeep. Uh, thanks so much for joining in. Well, we had Escort's numbers, actually, that just hit the screen, and that was one set that looked pretty good. What's your view on the stock at these levels? Well, I think this is one stock which has really, really rewarded the shareholders uh, in a handsome manner over the last, what, one, one and a half years. Nobody used to kind of really, uh, you know, bother about this stock, and suddenly this stock, uh, post this Kubota coming in, and, uh, you know, they're, them restructuring the business, uh, the further restructuring we understand is in the offing. So if uh, you know somebody is looking at a long-term uh, uh, you know investment, I think Escort Kubota even at current level looks good. Uh, I, I don't think there'll be uh, immediate major excitement, but uh, over a period of time, I think things will start uh, improving uh, further from here on and uh, giving uh, the investors rich reward. Uh, 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 one small uh, point here is that uh, there, there can be some blips when they sell parts of their business, which is not core, uh, to Kubota's uh, overall strategy. Mm -hmm. And that uh, can give one-time blip uh, uh, to the investors at this stage. Mm, Sudarshan has been reporting uh, about that. Um, Sudeep, uh, wanted to get your views in on MRF. Did you have a look at the numbers? They look pretty decent. A top-line growth of 6.5%, very strong margin expansion from 8.2%. It's gone up to 18.5%. But the stock reacted adversely to these numbers. Stock is down 2.5%. Um, can you tell us what is it that's disappointed the street when it comes to MRF? Because other companies like Seat, JK Tires, when they reported numbers, look good and the stocks went up. I think uh, uh, as far as MRF is concerned, uh, uh, you know, of course, the margins went up and pretty much the entire industry enjoyed higher margin compared to earlier quarters on the back of the fact that, you know, the raw material prices uh, have uh, uh, kind of uh, come down and that did help the margin expansion. As far as MRF is concerned, I think at some level of the market and uh, there's a feeling among in the industry that uh, innovation levels are coming down and, uh, you know, the competitors are uh, catching up as far as uh, whole lot of innovation and whole lot of, um, you know, OME tie-ups and uh, things like that. Uh, I think there's a bit of a uh, sluggishness on part of aggressive uh, move, uh, which we used to uh, see from an industry leader. Uh, that may be the reason for uh, a little bit of disappointment. On the other hand, I think the price uh, uh, you know, at which it is quoting uh, does look really, uh, uh, you know, full. I won't say it's overvalued, but it does look uh, full. Uh, if if somebody has to buy a tire company stock, probably they should look at somewhere else, not MRF. Mm. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, so much happening, right, in the broader market. Uh, Safari, for example, if you're going to have these stocks up, is up 6%. Stocks at about 42.75, 42.75. Uh, there is a luggage maker. Spandana Spurti is up uh, 6%. Uh, you know, you've got uh, Vandala, which is up about 6% or so. Amber is up 7%. Uh, Cupid saw a big move yesterday. It's up another this uh, today. It's up about 6% or so. Uh, Voltamp is uh, at about 53, almost back at 5,300. I mean, the high was about 5,900. <clears throat> Voltam is seeing a 9% move, very large volumes on it this, uh, right now. Uh, look at uh, something like a CAMS, uh, which is up 6%, 2400 plus. Uh, Senko, I mentioned earlier. Look at Transformers and Rectifiers, 10% uh, gain, 180. Uh, and of course, names like Raid Gain, we've been discussing here. Anything you take a fancy to in, out of the list that I mentioned, uh, Sudeep? Well, the microfinance companies are, are doing pretty well. There is a complete uh, change in scenario. We have seen the credit access Grameen numbers. They were fantastic. Uh, Spandana Spooky, you mentioned, I think uh, the numbers are good. And numbers will continue to remain uh, on the positive territory. I uh, do see them uh, logging in quarter and quarter growth. Uh, you know, leave aside Bandhan, they have their unique set of challenges. But uh, every other uh, bank or uh, a microfinance company which is 
focused on microfinance are having a good time. Asset quality is improving, loan growth is strong, and the margins are strong as well. Uh, so uh, I see microfinance as a sector which can be looked at definitely from investors' point of view uh, with uh, you know six months to one year time horizon at least. The other area which uh, you know I think uh, one can look at is uh, you know definitely this uh, this uh, entertainment and uh, related space wandla holidays uh, they have theme parks uh, uh, in multiple locations and all that they had a pretty challenging and torrid period during covid obviously uh, like pretty much the airline and the entertainment industry but things are coming back as we know revenge consumption and you know what not uh, so i think uh, that is one area which i'm definitely positive on whether it's the uh, you know the 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 the, the the airlines or the, uh, the, the, the PVR Inoxes of the world or even uh, Wanderlas uh, uh, of the world. Okay, all right. Uh, Sudeep, uh, thanks so much for joining in, giving us, uh, uh, you know, your view on some of these names and, uh, you know, giving us quite a few stocks. Oh, you're gonna, hope you're going to use some of their services and have a good weekend as well ahead, uh, Sudeep. Well, uh, you know, we're almost done with market trading today. So let's do a quick recap then of all the stocks that did well in today's trading session. The Nifty goes home with gains of close to around 95 points. But as we said earlier, that knockout punch is missing. And a few stocks that were dragging today. Bajaj Finsaf had lost its way in the final hour of trade, so that stock ended with a cut. Dr. Reddy's was down a percent and a half. SBI Life as well did go home with a cut of around a percent. What did well? Some upgrades coming in on a polar hospital, so that stock was up more than five and a half percent. Adani Ports as well, the traffic growth is quite good. And the Royal Enfield, I'll tell you what, it's a beautiful bike and the stock price as well looking quite good because that stock was up close to around 2.5%. Titan came out with its numbers, it built on to its gains, was up a percent, goes on with the gain of around 2.5%. LTI Mine Tree as well, stand out from the IT pack. Rima, what else? Well, uh, Zomato was the stock of the day on the in the broader markets, ends with a gain of close to about 10 odd percent. So looking up over there post react after reporting a profit number of more than 35 crores. Uh, other notable gainers include a Concord reacting favorably to numbers. Gujarat Gas was higher in trade. A couple of NBFCs like L&T Finance Holding, m and Financial, LIC Housing Finance saw a gain between about 3 to 4 percent. On the losing side, you had Marico down 1 percent. Uh, Chola Investments slipped close to about 3.5 percent. And some earnings misses like a Kirloskar Oil, for instance, that was under pressure. Uh, the stock slipping in trade. There goes the bell. Well, that is the end of the week. Yes. <laughs> <Just in laughs> case anyone. Got it right. <laughs> well, you know, so done for the week. Let me just quickly wrap up uh, the <clears throat> week from a uh, sort of Friday to Friday perspective. Two and a half percent of the small cap index, and we leave just about one percent away from its uh, uh, highs. The uh, mid cap index uh, for the week, I'll just uh, quickly tell you what uh, we uh, did uh, two, two and a quarter percent, so a little less actually on the mid cap index. Uh, for the Nifty for the week, uh, it was almost just under 1% or so. Uh, actually, the start of the week was not that great, but of course, things picked up uh, and looked vastly better. Uh, and of course, the weakest of the lot has been the Nifty Bank. Uh, for a while, it's been the weakest, but it did better than the Nifty with about one and a quarter percent gain. That's uh, Friday to Friday. So that's essentially where we leave off uh, at. Uh, well, uh, it's goodbye from all of us here at this edition of Closing Bell. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, but don't go anywhere. Our Friday special, Smart Money, will pick up on the action in just a bit.